Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Sketchy Ideas, the point, counterpoint, dueling whiteboards, live podcast show, where Michael and I combat, discuss, and determine the best ideas to move forward in personal development, business, leadership, you name it. We're talking about it, especially if it's way off the wall. I'm Brad James. And I'm Michael Rampola. And today, Michael is going to share with us something very, very special and something they do with everybody over at Spirity. They're going to do something, and, and I'm going to draw this on the whiteboard just so you all can understand maybe what we're talking about here. I feel like I'm playing Pictionary. What is that? That's about right. Um, it's, it's teeth. It's, um, it's, a, it's a boat. It's a, is it a boat? It is a boat. Is, it, is that a sail? Is it a sailboat? It's a dinghy. It's a, it's a schooner. It's something like that. Yeah. It's a person on a boat. That's right. So, so Michael's going to share with us today. Yeah, they are. These are fishermen. my fish. It's a fisherman. <laughs> so, so Michael is going to show us how to navigate the four C's of growing your business. So I figured I my like drawing it. from when I was four or five for my first ever t-shirt design for summer camp was printed on every single t-shirt. They, for that they put that camp. on a shirt? I would, have, I would buy that shirt. <laughs> right? It's kind of cool, you know, especially knowing that a four-year-old made it. I, I, think, I think we need to revive that. Than four. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, All right, so, so in light, that's a... I don't know if I can get more sketchy than that today, but I'll, I'll do my best. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, bud. All right. So uh, navigating the four C's. The, yeah. We're, those four C's. I'm not, I don't know if yeah, well, we'll see. All right. Navigating the four C's of business <laughs> growth. As Brad said, uh, here it's really our job is to help business owners overcome their obstacles. And with every business owner we work with, we make sure that they understand these basic principles about how business works or how businesses really grow ultimately. Most business owners want their business to grow, at the very least grow, if not scale. Or if they don't want either of those things, they wanna be more efficient, so they're getting more productivity, more uh, profitability. One way or another, most business owners want things to be better, one way or another. If they understand how business works, if they understand these basic four principles, they'll be able to better navigate those ever-changing seas of commerce. That's a C. Um, on their way to that outcome. So here are the four C's of business growth. The first one is CA or customer acquisition. And these are in no particular order because we are gonna put them in a sequence later. Another of the four C's, put it that way, is customer retention. Another C of business growth is cash flow. And another of the four C's is company growth. So I'm saying yes, one of the principles of growth is growth, but stick with me, it'll all make sense in a minute. All right, now that's makes sense at its highest level, but we need to go just a little bit deeper and break each of these four C's down by one more level. So there are two parts to each. The two parts of customer acquisition, sales. Before you dive in this, could you, oh. could you talk a little bit about how sure. you got, how you figured this framework out and, oh. and why you use it? Sure. That's probably good, probably worth talking about. Well, we find, and I think if you're a business owner, you will find this as well, you could be spending your time on a lot of different things. There are a lot of different uncharted waters. You could be exploring a lot of uh, new waters. You could go, um, you could go fish and see if, if, they, if they're biting. If you need to choose how to use your limited resources, of course, you're going to put those limited resources where they will bear the biggest catch. They were, we're going to go all the way in on this one today. So therefore, it's important to understand what is the best way to do that? With my limited resources, time, materials, people, funding, where am, I, where am I best spending my time? And there's a shift in mindset. When you go from employee to owner, there needs to be a shift in mindset that the owner's priorities are often different, or I would say in many cases need to be different 
than the employee's priorities. The employees need to understand the owner's priorities, but at the end of the day, the owner has some things that are theirs and theirs alone. Sometimes it is a lonely, lonely journey captaining that ship, and it's important to know where you're going. All right. Will that, will that do for now? How Swabby? did you come up with it? Like, wh what, was, what was the journey on like, figuring out these four critical areas? Because I know, I know you guys just don't just do stuff. There's a story behind these four areas outside of the applicable story. Uh, absolutely. You guys have worked so, with tons of clients. And, and uh, so tell me, tell me maybe the story of how this came to be. Great question. Uh, I would say the way that this came to be was an, was an identification that, basically what I had said before, there needs to be a shift in mindset. And I, the classic, what got you here won't get you there is, is I think the barrier, or how I would describe the barrier that we kept running into. So if I continue to operate under, the, under an older model or a more traditional model, I know this was my journey when I first had a consulting business, I was focused on one of these four areas. I'm, I'm holding back on priorities because that's going to be a discussion in a minute. But where I had spent my focus and my time was good for a time, but it wasn't ultimately going to get me to something that looked like a growing company or something that looked like me operating like an owner. If you are currently trading your time for money, you are not yet looking at your business in the right ways. You are currently um, what, uh, fish for a day. You're basically just fishing for yourself. So if we're going to teach you to, uh, if we're going to teach you to fish, we're going to enable you to fish so well that you're actually feeding not just you, but your family and others around you. Then it's important that we help you to put your, put your hook and your lure um, in, the, in the right corner of the, uh, of the lake. And I, we just went to a lake. But different scale, small business, large business. Um, uh, Co-host there, FYI, you lost a camera. I don't know if that's important. It is a live show, folks. This is, it is a live show. All right. So <laughs> to that point, um, so we got here by identifying that, and we're back. We got here by identifying that if we didn't establish proper priorities for ship captains, um, that those ship captains would soon be, well, they'd be out of work and they'd be swabbing the decks again. And I don't know if I have your audio either. For what it's worth, you, you can. There it is, the poop deck, and the poop deck. Is that the second poop reference we've made on this show? For those of you keeping track at home, that's anybody two, got two, a scoreboard? Two, and we got the, the the poop scoreboard. That's two for poop. <laughs> uh, customer wow, customer retention. <laughs> two parts of customer retention are now you got me off because we come back here because let's go somewhere else. Cash flow. Cash flow is about two things. It's about finance and accounting. Accounting being knowing what happened with your money. Past tense, bookkeeping type stuff. Finance being what are you gonna be doing with your money? Making sure that either money is coming in, not too much of that money is going out. Finance, future thinking, accounting, current and past tense. Customer attention is about service or depending your business, product delivery. Delivering an excellent service or product to the people who paid for it. And then operations and administration. Basically, the things that keep your business running, even if you're not delivering anything out the door. And company growth then is two, two elements to that. Some might say that it's the shift from working in the business to working on the business. We call it moving from being tactical to strategic, from rowing the oars to um, piloting the ship. Um, and then the, the second part is, are you growing or scaling? And do you know the difference? Now, Brad, you work with growing and or scaling businesses. How do you help businesses identify which way they should be, which way they're going, or which way they want to be going? How do you break down growing versus scaling? Uh, so we, we define growth. Growth is different than scale from the standpoint of um, business growth has to do with growing systems and growing, growing the foundational pieces and scaling has to deal with uh, incoming revenue. And therefore the thing that people would think about with growth there is you're probably adding personnel or just multiplying those systems that you already have in place. So if you look at it from those two standpoints and whatever you want to call them, 
but those are really the two things that, that we talk about. So when we talk about it in terms of marketing and sales, like we've done in the past, we'll talk about marketing systems, sales systems, and then scaling that is either you're putting more into it to get more out of it, or you're cloning it and tweaking it to add more of them. Well done. I, that's exactly how we talk about it. If I'm going to go math for a minute, which I apologize in advance, um, growing is typically adding where scaling is multiplying. We definitely need sound effects for this. We need a calculator thing and all that good stuff. Do, 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 do. Or I could do. <laughs> that's, that's an old one. Um, good. So we've got, so we're doing, so our company growth, this is a strategy question. Your ability to move as a business or from being tactical to being strategic is your ability to grow or scale. Which one you're doing is the decision you need to make because it's that decision and priority is going to influence a lot of the other things that we're going to talk about. So if you're growing your business, if you're focused as an owner is to grow your business, you can add things or you can take them away, right? You could remove expenses and get better bottom line. Or you're going to add more people, as Brad talked about. You're going to maybe add more, more, um, more top line or uh, say more top of funnel customers. Great. All that is growing. But your ability to multiply is your ability to scale. Are you buying a bigger ship or another ship? Back to our ongoing fishing metaphor here. If I am buying a bigger ship, that's only growth. And I can buy a really, 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 really big ship. Them, so we're good. All I've right. got a running tally of all your... your Check. I want to make sure all these are counting. Okay, good. So um, I, there was a ship. If you're growing your ship, then make sure that's all growth, right? You can buy, you can always buy a bigger ship. That's still growth. If you buy another ship, that's scale because now you, you're, you're literally multiplying. You can run concurrent. You can get at least, well, hopefully twice as much out. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. So now I'm, I'm going to tell you, the, here's the quiz, pop quiz, hot shot. Here's the quiz question. And I know I, I'll, be a, I'll be a first to admit, I got this wrong the first time. Of these four Cs, this C I already told you is, is both a strategy and an outcome. So I'm going to block that one off. In these four Cs, you've got six options. And the question becomes, as a business owner, what is your number one priority? So you know our company name, Spirity, Spear. Spearhead is what we call this. And here's how you know it's your spearhead. If you get this thing done, nothing else really matters. And if you don't get this thing accomplished, nothing else really matters. Only one of these six areas is truly the spearhead for you as a business owner. I'm, I'm trying to guide and hopefully give you a couple of clues here. Uh, spear fishing, check. So if we're going to go as a business owner and focus our time and our effort on one thing and one thing only, if we're going to create a truly singular priority, because that's what a priority really is. I've got six options, Brad. Now, Brad, um, put yourself back young, aspirational. You just, you just bought your first, um, your first rowboat. You've got, you, you, you dug some, some, uh, okay. I got a rowboat, got a rowboat. You, you, you dug some fish, uh, some, uh, some fish, some worms out of the backyard. Right, you, you, you've got your, your father's mm -hmm. uh, fishing pole on loan and you're gonna go out and, and fishing. What at that time do you think is the most important thing? Sales, bringing in new revenue, marketing, which is advertising, getting people to look over here, awareness, accounting, keeping a tally of what's happened, finance, knowing what you're gonna do next, service or product delivery. In this case, it would be bringing home fish and operations or administration, um, I would say, make sure the boat doesn't leak. You got one of those things is going to be your number one priority. I'm, I'm really extending the metaphor. I hope it still works. Sales. Sales. Why sales? Because if you're not selling anything, you don't need any of the rest. If I'm not selling anything. I don't need anything, any of the rest. So what is selling in this case in our in our... Uh, Brad in his in his boat um, with, uh, uh, above above the the fish with with the with the triangular sail there. What is what is me the putting a hook sails? in the water? Putting well, the hook in the water. It, well, no, it's pulling pulling a fish in. So that's that's what it would be. So, so sails the is putting the bait. 
but sales would be ah. actually pulling the fish on board. Got it. So it's not just the fish, it's actually hooking the fish and bringing them in. Yep. Excellent. Now, have you ever met, have you met any other fishermen in your journey as a four or five year old, um, you know, explorer who didn't look at it the same way? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, totally did. With, 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 if we're talking about the most important thing out of those, yeah, many times. All right. Well, what does it look like if I prioritize something else? Let's say instead of prioritizing getting the fish in the boat, I'm focused on keeping tally. There's nothing to keep tally of. But how often right. do you find yourself comparing yourself to other businesses and how are they doing compared to how we're doing? I used to do that all the time. Like, I, I think, I, I mean, that's natural, right? That's, that's the world we've been brought up in where you see what everybody else is doing and you're like, I got to be doing that. So that's yep. just, uh, that's an instinctual thing. Exactly. And if I stay in that instinctual, that natural tendency to compare, and I lose sight of my number one focus, which is getting fish in the boat. If I'm too busy figuring out how many fish everybody else has. What am I not spending my time doing? Fishing. Fishing. Nice. That's right. All right. Uh, let's say um, let's say my boat does leak, and, and my my I spend most of my morning work making sure that I have everything in the boat that I could possibly need for the entire day. What have I not mm -hmm. spent part of my time doing? Fishing. Fishing, because what's my number one job as a business owner? Fishing. Fishing. Yep. You got to bring right. home the fish. If I'm if I'm I'm painting the boat, I'm maintaining the boat. I mean, do I really do I even need a boat to fish, Brad? No, I can go to the shore and just throw it in the river. Thank you very much. But how often do you find people focused on new business owners or not quite owners, people who are making the transition to ownership, and they're focused on all these? I need the right brand name. Um, I need to, I need to make sure that everything uh, I need, you know, my processes, I got to learn QuickBooks before I can even start yeah. to think about selling my product. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that happens every time is that they dive in and they see all of the things that they should be doing and they don't understand that each of those, some of those other things really don't matter unless you actually are pulling in revenue in this case, fish. Well put. Shoulds are the barriers to company growth. Shoulds are the siren song of what it means to be a business owner. You know, as a business owner, what you really should be doing, and all of those shoulds are distracting you. And before you know it, you've steered your ship into the rocks and scuttled the whole thing. See? Yep. We, we talk about shooting all over yourself. Bingo. Another, another joke. And we're in. As a business owner, your job needs to be to note if if notice, okay, but in, be ready to ignore those shoulds if they right. are not in service of your number one responsibility, which is selling, in this case, landing fish. Brad, does it matter mm -hmm. how many different lures I have in the water? No. You only need one. And how many times do you one. find you do a little bit of marketing? No, no, we don't oh. do that. <laughs> how often does a business owner focus on marketing in, instead of, I mean, marketing serves sales, marketing's function is awareness. But if all I'm doing is generating yeah. awareness and not closing any deals. Correct. Am I fishing? That's where, no, you're not. You're just putting out a pretty brand, which again, that gets into the whole discussion of what marketing is and, and how those two need to work hand in hand. And if you're going to do marketing, do the right type of marketing at the beginning, not Vanity, vanity marketing, you know. Oh, well put. Um, posting, posting pictures on Facebook or social media as marketing is not the correct type of marketing you need to be doing if your goal with your small business is to generate revenue and a living early on. Um, and even, even then, if you're running a software company and you're trying to gain users, you just are defining a sale at somebody because you still have to sell the free thing as somebody who's actively using your software or your tool. So it's very nice. Either way, whatever you're doing, you're, you're talking about a conversion of some sort, which is bringing in a fish in this case. Very nice. 
Now, I think you're, you're taking me to a very nice place, which is sometimes I can be a very successful fisherman, but not bring home mm -hmm. any fish. Yes. Right. My father-in-law is a very successful. My father-in-law and brother-in-law are very successful fishermen, and very principled in their catch and release approach. They, I would say, are very successful salespeople in the world of fishermen, and they're not going to have much to show for it at the end of the day. That happens. That does happen. So I, I, as much as I know, in my early consulting days was so focused on making sure I delivered a great service product outcome to the people who are paying me. Yep. If I spend all my time there, I'm not bringing yep. in any new fish. Correct. Pretty soon right. I'm not fishing anymore and I'm not successful anymore. Right. And there, there is a time and a place to do that and uh, always over deliver on those fish. No but doubt. You have to bring more fish. You got it. Last option. So we're, we're, we've made the strong case for sales and we're ticking off all the other um, red herrings on the way there. <laughs> See what I did there? So what's last is finance. Finance is the is how I figure out the cash flow. What am I going to do with the revenue? Am I profitable? Am I making good use of my funds? Am I as efficient as I could be? How do I figure out if I have positive cash flow? What's the number one thing I need for positive cash flow, Brad? Sales. Sales. If I have no money in, fish. doesn't matter yep. if I get any money out. And we're back to fish. So are all of these things important? They are. At the end of the day, I, you've heard me say this before, I think on this very podcast, if you have no followers, you are not a leader. And if you have no mm -hmm. revenue, you are not a business. Mm -hmm. You are out or you are mm -hmm. on your way out of business, depending. And I have definitely been there too. So Business owners, in order to navigate the four C's of business growth, you must first prioritize what you are here to do. And that, in this case, is to get fish on the hook and in the boat. What happens after that, we can worry about that later. But if there are no fish on the hook, we can't get any fish in the boat. We can't bring any home for dinner. And we're going to have a very, well, a very nice day on the water. What, a bad day spent fishing is better than a good day in the office. And I don't disagree with that. At the same time... Right. A better day on the water is one where I'm being successful in my ultimate endeavor. So yeah. me, moving from tactical to strategic is how I spend my time focused there. So let me get these, let me give them a number. So sales is number one. And I'll tell you this, if we're, we are going to have to sequence this at some point. Number one is sales. Number two is finance, cash flow, efficiency, getting some sort of profitability to the bottom line. Because without that, again, you're out of business. Number three is going to be customer retention, delivering the product or service that people have agreed to pay you for basically. So this is getting the agreement on the money. This is getting the money and keeping enough of it. And that's the exchange, so to speak, of, of the good or service on the back end. Now, Brad, what is the, what is, is there a risk on our forces? What are, what, what are the storms? There we go. Go all in. What are the, what are the storms, the fog, the, oh. the things make me that, that make me lose sight of shore? Um, on my way to growth by way of revenue. I mean, all, all we got to do is look at the story of uh, who is who is Odysseus, right? Who Odysseus, traveled and, perfect. And ran across a whole bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so I don't know why. I'm sorry, so, friend. So, so Odysseus, here's the deal, guys. Here's on Odysseus while Brad gets that squared up. This is where the term Odyssey literally comes from. An Odyssey comes from Odysseus and his Odyssean journey and how many different trials and tribulations he had to get through to reach his ultimate goal and destination, which, by the way, was pretty dang simple, getting home to his wife. Let's say right. dinner was cold by the time he got there, but it was important that he got home. And on his way there, the things that he went through with a, with a focus on that goal were pretty – well, they would, they would stop – I think even the most experienced um, and adventurous um, Greek mythological figure. So um, what, what do we learn from that, Brad, as a business owner? Well, what do we, we learn from, from the story of Odysseus? I mean, we learn, we learn the fact that you got to be able to navigate it. You got to continue and you got to move forward with persistence, right? So he didn't stop mm -hmm. moving, which was right. the big thing 
about Odysseus. Absolutely. Because um, if he had stopped moving, where would we have, where would he have ended up is, is the big question. No doubt. No doubt. So he's got vision clarity. He knows exactly what he's focused on. He's got singularity of purpose. And, no, and whatever came his way, you're right. He never stopped moving, despite all the things that would have set back the, the average sailor, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a business owner, same goes for you. If you know what your number one goal is, have, keep business, then therefore you need to have that number, that singularity of focus and purpose as well, which is bring in revenue. Listen, I don't know your relationship to money. I don't know if you think money is evil. Um, it's a thing. People have these, these challenges around how they think about money. And I have them and I'm working on them as well. The money is not about the money. The money is always to serve a greater purpose. And just his journey was not about the journey. It was about getting home. So for you, why are you in, why are you in business to make money? The money serves a bigger purpose. There's very few people who get into business truly just to make cash and sit on it. And if they do, then what they're really in it is for, I don't know, some tally that they're keeping with themselves about how much money they have in the bank. So really, again, it's not about the money. So for you, it's not about the revenue. What it is about is why are you in business? What is the goal of that revenue acquisition? What are you doing with it that truly does motivate you as a business owner? That's how you right. stay the course, despite all of the... Um, what do we have? The, the, the sirens and the sea monsters and the whirlpools, um, the jagged rocks. Jagged rocks. Um, I th think there was a titan and or a um, you know angry god along the way. I, I'm sure it's probably a book, war battle. It's a, I remember I did this in college. I also remember all the details. I know it was long. I know it, it was a lot yeah, of reading. They were on their they were on their way back from Troy, right? Yeah, it falls the Iliad. Thank you. Yeah, I knew it. it was a part two. It was long. It was a part two. Eventually. It's a good sequel. Yeah. Um, the, Odyssey. the Odyssey. The Odyssey. All right, folks. So, so Michael, can you tell us a little bit more? You guys do this at Spirity oh, yeah. uh, quarterly with every client. Um, and this was just, for those of you who didn't realize, he broke down all of the details of these four C's that they cover. And, and, they go through these, each of these four areas every quarter with their clients. Now you've got, you've got one coming up here because it's the yep. end of the year. It and is. so you're going to be doing stuff. So, so one of the reasons we wanted to do this for everybody out there is we wanted to make sure you understood the framework that Spirity works through with your business. So if you're a small business owner, all of these areas, I'm sure you all can claim that you struggle with at least one of these areas. And I would imagine most of you probably struggle with 50 to 60% of these areas, probably because you are a small business owner wearing all of those hats every week, every day. Right. right. So I would recommend that you take these four C's and Michael's going to tell us how you can get in touch with him to schedule some time and get on the calendar and begin working through that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, thanks Brad, for the, for mentioning it. We do this with all of our members once a quarter. We call it the Business Improvement Quarterly, B-I-Q for short, always the second Friday of the third month, which is a little non-traditional. What it means is you walk into the coming quarter with your plan already in place. So this coming one will be December 11th. That is the annual review and also the annual uh, strategic planning. So you, our, our members and anybody else uh, in attendance there is gonna get four hours of uh, not just strategic review and strategic planning, but also some training and some great networking with other business owners. So we're going to do that on the morning of uh, Friday, December 11th. Awesome, very in-depth four-hour session. Everybody walking out of there is going to have a plan for, for the general plan for 2021, but absolutely a Loctite plan for Q1 of 2021 that properly prioritizes revenue so that everybody on your ship knows, that they're, knows which direction they're rowing um, and is, has confidence in you as their captain that you're going to get to the other shore. Hi, I did it again. Um, so you um, if you're interested in learning <laughs> more about that, if you're interested in learning more about that, yeah, um, let's uh, voice of God, Brian, if you don't mind, um, why don't you put, uh, put my scheduling link in the show notes and I'll give it verbally to everybody. Really simple, spirity.com slash Michael slash Zoom 30. Be happy to get on a 30 minute Zoom call with anybody and everybody that wants to learn more about what this looks like for their business and how Spirity can help you. Um, 
with that strategic planning event or anything else that we can do for you, as you can tell, we just love helping other businesses grow and scale as well. So uh, thanks, Brad, for asking for it. Would love to help anybody that needs this help. Yeah, and you and you got a you were sharing a story with me of somebody who once once you worked through this, all of a sudden there was some alignment. Can you share that story? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, it's it's amazing when you find somebody that is. It, most people that get into business are doing it because they love, um, they love delivering their product or service. Most people who start, they're an entrepreneur, they're a solopreneur, they're a business owner, and they say, I love doing this thing. People love me for it. I'm going to go out on my own. Pretty soon, if all they're doing is delivering great product or service, they're not focusing on sales. That's when businesses struggle, and that's often when we get to uh, have a conversation with them. I'd love to get there in advance, but it doesn't always work out that way. Most people will hold on to that longer than they should because they believe this is what they're ultimately getting, why they're ultimately in business. And um, I know for me, that was me. So I'll, I mean, I don't know if you were aiming at me, but I'll give me. Um, when I first met Spirity, um, I was focused as a business owner at the time, consulting practice, on delivering great products or service. And I realized my sales were uh, at zero and had been there for a couple months. And I uh, wasn't paying attention to my finances, my cash flow, and we as a family were quickly running out of funds. And basically, my ship was uh, was quickly running aground, and I didn't even realize it until somebody said, "Hey, do you know where you're going?" I'm sure. I'm just I'm just doing what I've always done. I'm going to networking events, and I'm meeting people. I'm trading business cards. Cool. You got any fish in the boat? Uh, what are you talking about? So. I realized that I was not focusing on sales. And once I realized the value, the first time I realized the value of focusing on sales was when as a business, as a part of Spirity, I was able to sell something and not deliver the service. I got paid for somebody else to work. And as a business owner, as a first time um, truly embracing what it means to be a salesperson, that was a game changer for me. When I realized that, oh, I can actually just buy another boat and train somebody to run it and send them out and they can make money while I'm sitting here um, setting up another boat to run. Like I can, that's, that's multiplication. So if you're a business owner still trading time for money and you don't yet understand or haven't yet tapped into what it truly means to grow and scale, I'm telling you right now, the number one thing you need to do is focus on getting more fish. Once you have more fish on the line, that means more fish in the boat and more fish coming home and without that, you're not growing yet. So if you don't have enough fish on the line, that's the number one thing for you to focus on. So all of you who are hungry out there, probably because you're not fishing enough. Very nice. So I'd recommend you, you take this little, uh, go grab your fishing pole and get out fishing, especially right now, because there are a lot of fisher people who are sitting at home right now because they don't know how to fish right now. They've forgotten where the lake is. They've forgotten their how to fish. They are, are discouraged from fishing because they had some time struggling. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, Michael, Michael and Spirity are really working hard to help people go put on their galoshes again and head back out there in their waders and start fishing again. So <laughs> get, get the hook back in the water, people. That's right. There, That's there, right. there are fish to One, be caught. There are plenty of fish to be caught, especially right now. There are a lot of people who are struggling with a lot of things. And the cool thing is, is that right now, if you help people, those people will become your champions for life because we're going through a really difficult storm and the storm will get passed. And it's a lot like Forrest Gump. Remember, he was fishing in the midst of prior to the hurricane. The hurricane came through, all the other boats went into shore he and, he and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan stayed out there, and then they were the only fishing boat on the market, and then you got bubblegum shrimp. So just remember, half of it is just getting up and going fishing. Nice. Well done. Well done. You know, that's why I drew Wilson on the boat. Oh, very different, nice. Different Tom Hanks movie, but, you know, we're connecting yeah, the dots. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're, we're cross-referencing our movie references. That's, that's next level, folks. Uh, listen, I hope you had a lot of fun today, Brad. I know I did. Thanks for, uh, thanks yeah. for captaining, um, our, our endeavor today, captaining this ship, uh, Brian Omeg, thanks for, uh, making sure our till stayed, uh, straight and, uh, our rudder in the water. 
That's that's like three more. Very coins. good. Very good. Still on this? All we, right. We've got we got about thirty Phil different references Rutter. to boats and fishing. Yeah. Yep. Um, did I did I do compass pointing to true north yet? If I didn't, I should have. That was a miss on my part. Anyway, all right. We 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 should put a wrap on this before it gets worse. Um, yeah. For sketchy ideas, I'm Michael. That's Brad. Uh, listen, as you already know, um, what we are here to do is have a little bit of fun and teach you a couple of things. And as you also know. Um, just because it's a sketchy idea doesn't mean it's not worth exploring. We'll be here again next week. We hope to see you then. In the meantime, you know how to reach us by email. Um, what's our sketchy ideas? Info show? at sketchyideashow.com. Thank yep. you, Brad. Info um, Brian, at sketchyideashow.com. We'll, Brian, of course, will make this all right in the show notes, and we'll fix it in post. Um, for sketchy ideas, I'm Michael. That's Brad. We'll see you folks again next time.